Welcome to Chapter 16 of the Kinsman Die Podcast, home of fantasy fiction based on Norse mythology that's written and read by me, Matt Bishop. In this podcast, I read my first novel, Kinsman Die, one chapter at a time. Every 10 chapters or so, I recap the key plot points and provide some insight into the myths I've referenced in the book, as well as some of the creative choices I've made along the way. And yes, I used to recap every five chapters, but I'm going to change that up a little bit. First up, I I don't feel like we're making much progress in the book. We're just now hitting the inciting incident, which is when the plot really kicks off. With fewer recaps, I think the pace will improve a little bit. And fewer recaps will give me more time to dig deeper into some of the mythic elements. The recap episodes themselves, I think, are going pretty well, but I feel like I'm jumping around a little bit too much and not diving into some of the topics as deeply as as I could or as they uh, perhaps deserve. So for the next few, I think I'm going to try to change it up a little bit. One example of a, a deeper dive topic might be necromancy in Norse Smith. There's a whole lot of cool stuff that's going on there. The Vanir War is another important topic that I keep hinting at but haven't addressed yet. So please rate and or review the podcast. Let me know what you think of this evolving format, the book so far, or if you think Odin would drink coffee, if he knew what it was. When we last left Hodor Odinson, he had just returned home to his girlfriend, Alara, and rather than help her in the wayhouse, he'd been sent to muck out the stables, which is where we join him now. Let's do this. Chapter 16. Hodor. Hodor leaned the pitchfork against the stable wall, pressed his bunched fists into the small of his back, and arched backward. A dozen pops and cracks chased up his spine. Only three more stalls to muck out. Were it not for the warm tingle that had spread through his body after he'd eaten the year-old fruit of Yggdrasil, he would have left those three stalls for tomorrow. But with a flush of renewed youth running through his limbs, he felt as if he could clean twice as many more. And the odd part was he didn't mind the labor. His old self, the warrior, would never have bent his back to clean a stable. He turned his face up to the sun, enjoying the warmth, but hating the remembered yellows and reds pressing against his eyelids. Kona whinnied at him from the enclosure behind the stable, and he made a shooing gesture. All right, I'll get back to work. Go play. Enjoy the day. And judging by the breeze's scrape across the stable's roof, these pleasant winter days were numbered. His hand found the stable wall, sliding along it till he gripped the handle of the pitchfork. With the tool tapping before him, he stepped into the empty space before him until a dull thud found him the wheelbarrow. When he found its handles, he tossed the pitchfork into the barrow, but it clattered and bounced out, thudding onto the frozen earth. He sighed. It had taken many winters before he had gotten used to getting around in the dark, and whenever he rushed, even a little bit, he ended up regretting it. Can I be of help, Carl? It was one of the house thralls that Alara kept around. No, be about your work. Yes, Carl. He cocked his head, listening to the receding scrape of the thrall's boot leather. He took a short pull from the wineskin hanging from its cord around his shoulders. Shaking his head, Hoder plugged the wineskin, stepped around the wheelbarrow, and groped for the pitchfork, and then placed it so it wouldn't fall out. When he refound the handles, he trundled toward the rich stink of refuse. No. The warrior he'd been would never have done this work. Well, folks, that was chapter 16 of Kinsman Die. I hope you enjoyed it. We were with Hodor as he mucked out stables and remembered the man, the warrior, he'd been. And as I'd mentioned before, please rate or review the podcast on whatever app or platform you use. They really help. Please share the podcast. That also helps a ton. And finally, please consider supporting my work by buying my books or in some other way. Likes, follows, Patreon locals, etc. I'd also enjoy hearing from you. You can email me at mattbishopwrites at gmail.com. And as always, I'll be reading from the Havamal, the sayings of the High One, Odin. And with this episode, I'm going to start, at least intermittently, reading from both Bellows and the Larrington translations. Not only is it a good refresher for me, but it nicely juxtaposes an older way of translating the text with a more modern version. Bellows, verse 16. The sluggard believes he shall live forever, if the fight he faces not. 
but age shall not grant him the gift of peace, though spears may spare his life. Larrington, verse 16. The cowardly man thinks he'll live forever, if he keeps away from fighting. But old age won't grant him a truce, even if spears spare him. Thanks for listening.